Welcome to the Dog Nerd Show, where we geek out over our best friends. I'm Megan. And I'm Michael, and this is a show about all things dog. Hey, everybody, we've got a great episode for you today. We've got the German short-haired pointer. Yeah, what a handsome dog. Beautiful dog. And hey, before we get started, don't you want to remind the folks at home something? Yeah, hit that little subscribe button down there. It's free. It won't cost you a dime. It helps us out a lot. Give us a thumbs up. We would really appreciate that. And then drop us a line. And also, when you do hit that subscribe uh, subscribe button, there is a bell. They don't even charge for that. <laughs> and if you hit that bell, it'll let you know when we have new videos pop up on this YouTube Yes, on the YouTubes. So, the YouTubes. Um, we have a great episode today. We meet Rhonda and her two German short haired pointers who are rescued. And I mentioned this in the video, but I can't mention Rhonda enough because I love her so much. She is a dear friend and inspiration for the Rhonda character in my book series, the Riley Carson series. Rhonda has taught me personally so much about rescue, about dogs, about animal welfare. She is just a wonderful person and her dogs are pretty amazing. So I guess without further ado, let's meet these beautiful dogs. All right, we are here with Rhonda, Maisie, and Mila, and they are German short-haired pointers. That is correct. So they're beautiful dogs. They're bred for hunting, yeah? Yes, that's correct. They're bird dogs. And uh, tell us what it's like to, <laughs> to be parents of these beautiful girls? So I get asked the question because they are so beautiful all the time, like what breed are they? A lot of people don't recognize the breed um, because they are uh, not as popular as some of the other breeds, but they are gaining in popularity. Um, I think they're number nine of the most popular breed now in the United States, but wow. um, they're high activity. So um, I intentionally sought out a dog. I was uh, running, I still do run, but I was running um, what, and looking for a partner to run with. And so I told a friend of mine, I was kind of looking in the sporting dog group, the Weimariner, Visla, uh, this breed, uh, good dog to run with. And um, they need about an hour of activity and not just to walk down the street okay. every day. So they need to go to the dog park and interact with other dogs. Or they, like I said, I run with them um, every other day and then they go to the dog park. <laughs> 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 She's chasing leaves and shadows. <laughs> she does like shadows. So and that's part of the bird hunting instinct is, you know, the little things. She seems to hunt butterflies and leaves more. Um, <laughs> the other one, as you can't see her right now, but is looking up the trees for squirrels and birds. Okay. So, um, one of the uh, reasons they're a popular uh, hunting dog is they're versatile. They'll do um, they'll do bird birds and they also do like ground stuff. Like oh rabbits um some people have them track deer for them okay um that's not the norm but it is something so they're very versatile um in their hunting skills so they have they're multi-purpose and so that's why they have popularity in the hunting okay and these two girls are rescued they are rescued they both are rescued um from a humane organization actually um i got her at five months old um, she actually came with their AKC papers, believe it or not. I think they accidentally gave them to me because not, that's not the norm for a rescue. They, they usually retain the papers. Um, but they did both, they, they both came spayed and neutered, updated on their vaccines and all their preventatives and um, are microchipped. So, um, but both from a rescue. So we talk often about how you can get purebred dogs from rescue groups, and this is a great example. So how old were each of them when you got them from their rescue groups? So Maisie here was five months old when I got her. Mm -hmm. um, from the little bit of background research that I have done, it looked like a family did surrender her to. Um, they moved uh, up to the rescue area that I got her from wow. and then moved back to their home state and left her behind is what I can tell from the, oh, the little bit of snooping around that I have done. But I am grateful every day to that family. I can't imagine somebody gave up such a wonderful dog and I'm, I'm so happy that I get to be her caregiver, so. Yeah, um, and she won the lottery because <laughs> y'all don't know Rhonda, but I know, well, actually, if you read my books, there's a character in the Riley Carson series named after Rhonda because Rhonda and I are buddies and she, 
Are you still the president of the Humane Society? I am. I am the president um, of the Humane Society back in my hometown. Um, so I do it remotely and then sometimes have to travel to yeah. uh, meetings and stuff. But yeah. So I've learned a lot from this lady. And one of those things was how many available dogs that are purebreds yeah. that you can get from rescue groups. So, um, so and then uh, Mila, Mila is the baby. She's the youngest one. Um, she, we got at nine months old. Um, I believe, based on her intake photo and some of the background, I believe she was probably with a commercial dog breeder or a high volume dog breeder. Um, she and her brother um, came into a veterinarian's office who kind of intercepts and places dogs with uh, uh, rescue groups from commercial dog breeders. Um, she came in heat. Um, and, and her brother, they still had her brother as pups. And so my assumption is, is because she came in heat and now she's nine months and they were having a hard time to place her and they didn't want to pay to spay and neuter because that's not what they do. Um, th they surrendered her to the vet and to the rescue group. Okay. So, and then uh, as you know, I got her already spayed and neutered Yes. and, um, from the rescue group. So commercial breeder, another name for that is Puppy Mill. Yes, Puppy Mill. And uh, I won't go off onto that tangent, but- <laughs> That will be another video conversation. <laughs> do not buy puppies from pet stores and we'll be good. Um, yeah, I could go on and on on that, you know that. But um, so tell us, okay, are they big barkers? They are not big barkers at all. Um, they alert bark, we let them alert bark. So sometimes if they see something in the tree, she'll bark a little bit. The dog walks down the street or somebody comes to the door, they'll bark a little bit. But we um, we let them alert bark. We uh, thank them for barking, tell them they're good girls, and then tell them enough. So, okay. um, but and that, and that works? <laughs> <laughs> it does work. Huh. Um, so they're not, but they're not big barkers. So I know that doesn't work with some other breeds that like to bark incessantly. So they, they really aren't big barkers. And um, I'm guessing that even though they have really short hair, that it probably does shed. So she, the white coated one, she's uh, uh, white and liver. Um, her, the, the patterns are called, so the little small dots are called ticks and then the bigger dots are called patch. Okay. So um, she's a roan, a liver, uh, tick and patch roan, and then she's just a white and liver, uh, mostly tick. There's like maybe one small patch on her hip there. Um, but she sheds way less. Her coat is much thinner. Uh, she gets colder in the in in the winter, and mm -hmm. I'll use that loosely here for people that are watching from the Northeast. We're in Georgia, <laughs> so she's from um, Ohio. <laughs> but I can see like her pinky skin on her underside, so she doesn't shed as much. Okay. She does shed more, and okay. it just seems to be her coat's just a little bit longer, maybe a fourth of an inch longer, um, and she does not get as cold. Uh, does not like the sweater. She likes the sweater, but um, they do. She does a good shedding once a year. Okay. Um, she sheds a little bit. But you'll pick up little hairs. Um, mostly uh, see them like when we go in the car sometimes in the back seat. Um, right now they're shedding a little bit. She's shedding a little bit. Um, it's not too bad. Okay. I, I know I, I'm a, a member of a couple Facebook groups and some of the other parents are complaining about the amount that they shed, but. I'm not seeing that with mine, but okay. maybe it's because I used to own a Siberian Husky at one time. <laughs> <laughs> and this is nothing compared to that. <laughs> That's correct. So so expect some shedding since yes. other... And it's really, I mean, to, true to the name, it's really short hairs. Yeah. I mean, they're little like quarter to half inch hairs. Gotcha. Okay. Um, you already mentioned activity level. So if you're a couch potato family, this is probably not a good dog for you. Probably not. They are wonderful families. If you have children, um, they love children. Um, with the breed, if you do get the breed, socialization is very key in the beginning to what you want the dog acclimated to. Um, because they are a hunting breed, uh, they can live successfully with cats, but you should probably introduce them as puppies. Okay. Um, she could care less about cats of any kind. Um, she did not care about cats that were living in my house because she's already been around them. Them, but I wouldn't if a cat ran across my backyard with her I'm not so sure how that would go yeah. um, um, she would probably not care but um, socialization um, they can get separation anxiety okay um, so it's key to socialize them with other dogs um, once they have their inoculations and they can go play with other dogs um, so oh there went a butterfly <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, so it is key to socialize them as they're little, and she's doing a little pointer stance there with a the leg up but, yeah. and the tail going. Um, but they are good with kids. They are good family dogs if you are a very active family. But active does not mean walking them down the street after work at five o'clock. Yeah. Active means uh, a good uh, 45 minutes of strenuous exercise of some sort, or t you know, if you're a runner or a hiker or somebody that. Uh, so even a 45 minute walk wouldn't be enough. They would need to really get. The they, heart rate. they would really need to, yeah, they really need to get running. It, you know, the people say they're either like 100% on or sleeping. Okay. <laughs> so there's like no happy medium. <laughs> and I mean, that makes sense with any hunting dogs because right. they're, you know, they're meant to be out in the field working. Right. And so that's not something that a lazy, lazy dog is going to do very well. No. Nope. So, so you already mentioned the cats and the children. So yes. that's great because those are usually socialization things, unless it's a, a breed specific thing like, you know, terriers and little furry things. Right. So, right. Um, yeah. Anything else that we should know about the breed? Um, they um, just, obviously they're a lean breed. A lot of people, um, if you have a dog that may be over loved <laughs> you may be shocked to see how cut they are but they are a muscular lean breed um, they do require a high protein diet because they are a sporting breed so we're feeding them a 30 percent protein 20 percent fat food okay. because and it's specifically made for sporting dogs um, so um, they're doing really good on the food that they're on you can see their coats are nice and shiny and, yeah um, they they, they actually don't eat that much uh, as far as active as they are, but um, so um, they do have, um, come here, come here, Maisie. So because of their, uh, come here, sit, good girl. So because, good girl, stand up. So because of their deep chest here and their high, high cut, they can get bloat. Okay. So what bloat is, is uh, when their um, stomach twists and nobody knows really why it's caused. I mean, the theory is it's too much activity after eating type thing, but it's a twisting of the stomach. Um, and it's usually these deep chested breeds that it happens to, so. Which is, it can be deadly. It can be deadly. So what usually happens is their stomach twists and it cuts off the blood to other organs like the kidney, the liver, the spleen. So you have to catch it right away. Um, Mila, so I didn't realize it when she was spayed, um, but Mila, when she came in and I agreed to take her, when they spayed her for me, I asked them to do a stomach tack. So her stomach is tacked to her uh, rib cage wall so that it won't twist. Now oh. she can get the bloat part of it, but she will not have the, 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 twisting. the, the twisting of the stomach, which would pinch off the blood circulation to the organs. Okay, so. and that's something that it's, it's an, a standard thing that they'll do if it's a... If asked, they will do it as an additional fee along. Uh, it's easiest and best to do it when you get them spayed. Um, it's an additional fee to do it. But it's e like if you're, if you're buying this breed and you're looking into it, you may want to look into that in addition to your spay surgery. It's just that they just kind of stitch the stomach to the inside of the rib cage somehow I'm not a vet but um, and then it keeps the stomach from flipping. Okay. And like I said, it's the easiest procedure. They, that's what they do if they bloat, mm -hmm. they twist the stomach back and then they will tack it then. Okay. But that's an emergency situation, be very expensive at that point. Yeah, so. absolutely. Now, any other health issues that they might have? <laughs> we got the butterfly again here. So, um, they uh, can get Addison's. Um, there is some ocular um, issues that they have sometimes. They get in, they're get they prone to entropion, which is where the eyelids kind of roll in up or down. And the, then the little uh, eyelashes scrape on the cornea, which is uh, common with some other breeds too. Um, they are prone to get von, I think it's von Wilder's mm -hmm. or von Wilber's disease, which is a blood clotting disorder. Um, so um, generally, uh, the breeders are asked to wait until the females are two years old so that they can have the blood test to see if they have, um, if they're the carrier of any of these um, uh, diseases, especially the Von Wilder Wilbers, um, whatever that is. Um, so they do ask because I guess you can't, it doesn't really show up in the blood work until the female turns two years. Okay. So if you're looking for a breeder and, and you're buying a dog, you'll want to make sure that they're not breeding their female before the age of two and you would want to ask if they're having a health certificate. Yeah, absolutely. Check to see if they're getting tested for everything that they need to be right. tested for. Um, and that, you know, that goes back to 
like you said, you can rescue. Right. If you are looking for a particular breed and you can't find it at a rescue, you've got to vet these breeders to make sure that they're not just in it for the money, that they want to produce healthy dogs. And not all of their dogs are going to be great hunters or great for show, so they will be looking for pet families. Right. Um, but that's really important to know because it, it will save people a lot of money in the long run Right. from potential uh, medical bills and things like that and, and give you a nice long life with your dog, hopefully. So, um, yeah, well, they are awesome they are awesome you know i feel like we we discovered the breed as i started running and was researching a running dog and then we found the breed and I, I feel like i mean they're very good dogs they're easy to train they they're very intelligent and smart and i feel like i missed out like because i didn't discover them until this age of my life and i'm like well i could have had this breed <laughs> for years they're such a good breed so if you have the time and the energy for them and um just, I mean, it's mostly just the time. I mean, you can successfully live with one in an apartment. <laughs> <laughs> She's got the hots for the cameraman right now. <laughs> oh, he probably had a spot on the ground. She likes to chase the dot. <laughs> so, um, but they can successfully, if you have the time uh, you want to spend with them, then um, you can- They'll live, be a great dog. Yeah, you can live with them in an apartment. Just need to know that you need to commit, it's a commitment. Okay. Just that, like everything else. That's a good point. Something I should have asked you. One, trainability, highly trainable and smart. Highly trainable, smart, yes. And you said even, we won't name names, but even the one that's not as smart as the other one, <laughs> once she learns something. It's locked in forever. Like, locked in forever. And so. so they can be a good apartment dog if you are very active and you've got space to take them running and. Correct. Okay. Correct. So some people in, in the apartment living situations, and I know it's becoming more popular now, like take them to doggy daycare for a couple times a week if they're gonna be working like a long hour at work, they can't work from home. So I know people that drop them off at the doggy daycare and then pick them up and yeah. they're exhausted when they come home. Yeah. So. That's awesome. Well, they are beautiful. Thank you yes. so much for introducing yes. us to this breed. And we, we hope that we've got some GSP. GSP. Lovers out there yes. who will get a kick out of this video. So yep. thank you so much. All right. Thanks. I can see why Rhonda says she wishes she knew about this breed sooner. Yeah. I mean, they're her running companion, but you could really tell that those dogs were happy and stable. Yes. Yes. And just such sweet dogs. I mean, so, I mean, they would just come up and stand by you and you could scratch their backs. And if you scratch their backs, they'd stay a little longer. Um, definitely, you could see their gameness. They they definitely would. Um, so um, Maisie likes to go after the shadows and Mila likes to go after the critters. Yeah. So that was super cute. And um, we even got a point out of Mila, but I don't think we got it on camera. I think she was off camera. Yes, yeah, she might have been at the time, but I did see that too. Yeah. It was yeah. really cool. Yeah. Sweet dogs. Um, Rhonda knows a lot about them. And you guys, we keep telling you, you can rescue purebred dogs. And she even rescued them at a pretty young age. So it can be done. Um, and they are good examples of that. I think, you know, she did mention, I believe this was off camera, that um, Mila is a little bit smaller than your average GSP. And that um, Maisie is... Uh, uh, longer legged than <laughs> a little, a little longer in legs than, than most. Yeah. You see that when they're side by side, um, just handsome, handsome dogs. I mean, they look like they just stepped out of an old English oil painting. Yeah. Yeah. Or like the Orvis catalog or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and she also did want um, us to mention, cause she forgot to mention this during the interview that, um, their tails were docked before she got them. And uh, they both were a little shorter, I, I think, docked shorter than is typical. Um, but she, you know, in some countries, they outlaw docking of the, ta the tails. And she did indicate that um, dogs that have, apparently these dogs, when they their tails are not docked, they're very, very long. And they can also um, have breakages. And, you know, you guys with uh, long-tailed dogs know that, those tails will hit everything and they can injure themselves and even break their tails, which can be a tough uh, injury to recover from. So um, just know that. And um, I think she said these, these tails were docked a little shorter than, than should have been for the breed. But that was just a point of note there. Um, I, you know, I really don't know if I've, I've probably met a German short-haired pointer at some point in my life, but I, 
I don't see them very often. And like Rhonda said, they're number nine in popularity yeah. in the United States. Yeah, they're they're field dogs. I've been around them all my life, but um, they're one of the best gun dogs out there. Um, I know I was shot because, you know, we always use them as bird dogs. I was shot when they said they were good duck dogs. Yeah. You know, you think, you think uh, labs when you yeah. think ducks. Well, what was interesting is, you know, I didn't, didn't really know anything about the breed other than, you know, what I had seen on television. Um, but we read that they're very multi-purpose. They're very good swimmers. They are great multi-purpose hunters. And even talking off camera to Rhonda about her two, you know, um, one would be more active in, as a hunter and the other would be more active in pointing out. Um, but it, she told us the story of uh, them seeing a chipmunk and, and just freezing. And, and she went and made her coffee and came back and they were still frozen in place. So I guess their, their purpose is to freeze and point at whatever it is so the hunter knows what to get. Yeah, typically you would find the bevy of let's just say quail and the the dog would point the the pointers would point it out and then you would rush you know a Brittany or another type of dog that would actually flush the quarry out uh so they are i think germans are german short hair pointers are probably the best at that i mean the english pointers are pretty good too um and some of the spaniels but German, You're German creating pointers. controversy here. I can't wait to read the comments. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Germans, they they'll they'll point. They 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 got a good sense. And um, for all you hunters out there, they they also have a pretty soft mouth. I don't think it's as soft as a um, as a as a lab, but they're pretty good. And uh, you know, if you go <laughs> South Georgia quail hunting, you're going to run into these. Yeah. Oh, I've never been to, oh, I've never been hunting. So <laughs> I wouldn't have been around them, but it was really cute. I was uh, petting Mila at one point afterwards and, and I could tell she keyed into something cause she started leaning and, and I was like, she was facing away from me anyway, but that little tail was just full of energy. And it's so interesting to see these dogs that are bred to do this work those instincts just come out and boy, they, they're on, they're on target. So really a great breed. I think that, you know, number one, you've got to be active, you know, like Michael said, these are Rhonda's running companions and how perfect, but you've got to have, you've got to have time to exercise them, uh, you know, a a short walk or even a non-strenuous walk is not going to be enough for them daily. They need more than that. But if given that, and given the training, she she talked about the training with us that they that she did um, model citizens these dogs, and and she even said that uh, Mila had a tough time learning how to sit, and uh, you know after a lot of perseverance, um, Rhonda succeeded. But I cannot stress how important it is to train your dogs, no matter what breed they are, because the work you put in on the front end is going to pay off big time in the long run because you will have dogs that listen to you that will you'll be able to keep safe because they listen to you um they will be good citizens when people come over so these these were great dogs i fell in love oh absolutely they, i mean classic hunting dog i mean just beautiful and the examples that sounds bad but these were perfect examples of uh i mean they look like they just popped right off i think i said earlier off of an oil painting or uh, out of an orvis magazine they gorgeous dogs yeah. I, I have a soft spot in my heart for that dog well so. i i enjoyed meeting them we hope you guys enjoyed meeting them Rhonda was a wealth of knowledge about the breed so I think we covered everything, most everything in the interview. So we hope you enjoyed it. If you have German short haired pointers, we would love to hear all about your dogs in the comments. You can also drop us a line, dognerdshow at gmail.com. And you can find us everywhere online at dognerdshow. Well, folks, until next time, we really appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.